let's talk about where we are and the RFK factor. Now, Team Biden is very aggressively, you know, set up their own little war room to to go to battle with RFK Jr. Um, uh, he's not conservative. I mean, I've interviewed him. He support every, supported every left-wing, radical, Democratic candidate over the years. He wanted to be the Democratic nominee. They rejected him. Uh, he's a radical environmentalist, believes in the radical, you know, New Green Deal and climate alarmism. Uh, his, his policies are, are far left. Uh, do, you see the, do you see him getting on the ballot in all 50 states? Do you think the Libertarian Party will take him on? Look, I think the beauty of our country is we have a free system where people are able to have ballot access if they actually meet certain criteria. So the Democratic Party now is going to probably try to do everything they can to keep this man off the ballot, just as they were trying to stifle him when he was running as a Democrat. But the thing that has become clear, Sean, is that he's free to have his own views on the climate change agenda, which I do think is a threat to the sovereignty of the United States, on abortion, on a range of other questions where he's anti-Second Amendment. He's a range of issues that are not aligned with the Republican Party that better align with Democrats. And so if he does make it on the ballot, as if he does it by the rules he deserves ballot access to do, it should take votes away from the Democrats. And this should be a good development, not only for President Trump, but I believe for this country. Because what we need this November is a decisive moral mandate, a landslide of Reagan 1980-1984 proportions. And I think we have an opportunity to do it. And if RFK being in this race helps that, you know what? I think that could be a good thing for this country. And I'm against any Democratic effort to try to remove him or keep him off the ballot as they will try to do. What's going on, everyone? Stop skinny here today. I want to give you my analysis about Democrats being terrified over RFK Jr. and his room running mate, uh, Nicole Shanahan. All he can do is take away Trump, uh, votes from President Biden, one Democrat says. So as you can tell, as you've probably seen, and it seemed like it was a crazy news day yesterday that I decided to take the day off to adjust to my new job. So uh, I might have to make some changes with this channel. But for the most part, I'll still be giving you my commentary throughout the day. I just might be a little bit behind than everyone else. Now, one thing I want to mention about this thing is that RFK is really appealing to the left here, right? And this is what's really hurting. And, and this is the funny part. People were trying to say, oh, J JFK takes votes away from Trump. Uh, Biden likes JFK. JFK takes more more votes away from Trump because there was, he was on this whole vaccine spiel. But I was like, no, but everything else, Republicans disagree with RFK. It makes no sense to assume that RFK will be a threat to Trump than Biden. Look at the polls. The polls have Trump. And Biden, pretty much even. But this is not about the, the polls. We'll get to that later. But right now, I want to focus on Shanahan and how she got her start in this uh, in this race. Democrats are leaving no room for doubt about how they view former party uh, colleague turned independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And his freshly minted vice presidential pick, deep-pocketed lawyer. Now, how she got her money? Apparently, she, divorced a co uh, she was divorced from a co-founder of google who's worth about 121 billion dollars so yeah she got a lot of money even if she, even if she only got 10 percent of that 12 billion dollars in the hands of, of, of nicole shanahan and this is the funny part <laughs> this is why i don't like divorce laws because divorce laws almost act like socialism right you didn't produce the wealth but you took a partial percentage of it. Now, I know women are going to get mad, but this is the argument I'm just trying to make just for argument's sake. Is that I, I believe all progressives, for the most part, socialists, Marxists, they're nothing but looters. They cannot build wealth for themselves. All they know how to do is take wealth away. That's all I'm trying to say. And the wealth that she's siphoned off this man. And the funny part is the, the man she's married to right now, they had a ceremony. So I don't think they are officially legally married. Right. Because what? She don't want the same thing that happened that she did to this guy happening to her in this marriage. Now, I'm just this is just my this is my this is my assumptions. But this kind of leads into the mentality that I feel like a lot of people on the left have that they feel entitled to other people's money and divorce law in a way operates in the same model. I'm just saying you didn't build the wealth, but you feel entitled to it because you're somehow associated with it. That's just my thoughts. This is, this is what I'm thinking here. And I just thought that would be an interesting point to point out that she didn't earn the money. So that means she has no like, I, I, I want to say she she's allowed to be more charitable with it because she didn't really earn it. She didn't she don't value it the same way. Just like if you just give your kid a toy without without them earning it. They're not going to respect the toy. 
It's the same thing that's going on with uh, Mackenzie Bezos too. She's here donating the money everywhere. She didn't have to earn it, for the most part, anyway. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The women don't get mad. I'm just. I'm just trying to make a, a observation here. The pair are dangerous to voters and present as a spoiler ticket destined to siphon votes away from President Joe Biden and deliver the White House to former President Donald Trump. Now, I don't want to spend too too much time because I'm really trying to pace myself in this video. In this next clip I'm about to show you, you're going to see how the mainstream media is covering this and why I believe, look, Republicans, we, we're consistent on this matter. We believe you shouldn't be denied uh, your, your, your name on the ballot. We believe that uh, JFK should be on the ballot. Regardless if you think, oh, you, Kenny, you're, you guys are politically motivated to allow JFK to be on the ballot, but we're consistent, though. We said that we wanted Trump on the ballot. There's no reason to deny an, a candidate out of, the, out of the ballot. Let him have it if he deserves to be on there. This, this is the funny part about the left. They want to get mad at conservatives. And then when it's politically expedient for conservatives to actually be consistent on a the matter, they, they're mad that we're consistent on the matter. While when it's in, when, they're, when the left is inconsistent on a the matter, they want to force that and say, oh, no, we're allowed to make some exceptions because of this little reason here. And you'll see after my clip with the mainstream media. And this is from a Fox News perspective. Let's take a look. And it's the moment that's been terrifying Team Biden for months. Our Robert Kennedy Jr. officially naming attorney and entrepreneur Nicole Shanahan for his running mate as his independent campaign for president heats up. 70% of Americans say that they don't want to have to choose between President Trump and President Biden. They don't want to choose between the lesser of two evils again. I hope the Democrats and Republicans are looking at those poll results and they're devising ways to keep me off the ballot. They're trying to keep me off the ballot and to frighten you into choosing between the two tired and unpopular heads of the Uniparty. And Team Biden is launching an all-out effort to stop RFK Jr. from securing any votes. The president's campaign staff has reportedly plotted an entire operation to take down Kennedy. And the liberal media is more than happy to play along. My view is third parties they're like cockroaches in the kitchen, okay? It's not what they carry off that upsets you. It's what they fall into and foul up. Let's be clear, a vote for third party is basically a de facto vote for Donald Trump. I don't think it's a smart move to spend a lot of energy attacking Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, I think he's probably a marginal candidate. I don't think he has a big impact on the election. I do worry that Bobby just taking some percentage of votes from Biden could shift the election and lead to Trump's election. So as you can see, the mainstream media, they're here to pretty much protect the Democrats. And I think, uh, I forgot who, who got fired yesterday as well. Um, Ronald McDaniels got fired again, this time from NBC before she even started. And this leads into this part of this idea that a lot of people have about the mainstream media. And I warned you, journalist is the most left-wing prof profession. That means journalists have a Democratic bias. A left wing bias. And you saw from the intro, not the intro, you saw from the clip that I played previously that they're really going all out against these blitz attacks on JFK. Right? At least as conservatives, we're like, yo, we're okay. Oh, we, we take RFK too. We, we, we're going at it. Trump already attacked RFK. But I think it's a smart political move that Trump did when I get when I cover it. But I want to focus on the mainstream media and how they're covering this. Though, Biden, uh, though Trump leads all polls to be the next president, partisan Dems generally believe the moral duty of the media outlet is to, to, is, is to exclude everyone who supports that movement. It's hard to imagine a more corrupt view of journalism, yet, as we see from NBC, it's predominant, right? And then this is someone trying to justify why they're allowed to ax uh, Ronna McDaniels. And to me, if, if I'm being honest, Ronna McDaniel is probably more left than most Trump supporters. But you asked her. Right? And this is the funny part. If you look at any liberal media, the, the Republican they have as the, like we, we say as a show, the, to show partisan, like uh, bipartisanship, they don't support Republicans in any of their takes usually. It's usually they're apologizing for Republicans. They're trying to make it uh, Republicanism more palatable to their liberal audience. That's the only kind of Republicans they're allowed to be exposed to their, their, their people. But let's get back into this. Biden builds machine to attack RFK Jr., according to Axios. Uh, President Biden is worried that RFK's potential impact on the election that is built on an entire operation dedicated to attacking Kennedy. Trump campaign also figures that Kennedy is more likely to pick off votes from Biden than Trump, so it so it's content to wait and watch. 
this is a false insight because I have a story that shows the opposite. Why it matters. These, contra these contracting approaches are coming into focus as RFK Jr., who's polling better than any independent candidate since Ross Perot, I, Perot, sorry if I misspelled that, in 1992 faces increased scrutiny. Zoom in. Trump's margin of victory over Hillary Clinton in three key states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Washington, was smaller than the total number of votes that, that the Green Party candidate Jill Stein won. And in this election, I think there's five candidates running. I think there's two Green Party candidates, if I remember correctly. Let me know if I'm wrong. But Democrats got a lot of fractions in their part. And this is the funny part about the Democratic Party. And when they label conservatives, right now conservatives are fighting. We got the Stephen Collar stuff going in the background, the Kansas stuff going in the background, right? We're always fighting. The conservatives are always fighting, right? But the progressives, to me, they show unity, but in the, internally they're fighting the same way that conservatives are. It's just conservatives are just more transparent. And I think that's why I'm a conservative, because I believe conservatives are more transparent people than the Democrats are. I already show you the bias the Democrat people have. Democrat people have. Democrat people are more likely to block you for having an opposing political opinion than conservatives are. This is why NBC couldn't allow Ronna McDaniels to be a contributor on their network because they don't want their views to be exposed to another point of view. Right? And this is why I don't like liberals sometimes, man. Yeah, y'all project onto us what you actually doing, <laughs> John Stewart. Uh, we get into that to, uh, next in, an, in another video. But here's the polls that I'm talking about. Latest presidential polls, Biden tightens race in key battleground states, but Trump still leads. Now, last time I checked, Robert F. Kennedy was polling like 22% when he was running as a Democrat. So I'm going to assume he's going to take, he's, he's taking those 22% with him in his independent uh, campaign. So this, these people, so these people are really worried, right? Some Democrats fear that Kennedy, who Tuesdays picked leftists, Attorney Democratic donor Nicole Shanahan as his running mate will hurt Biden's re-election chances, pulling more potential Biden voters than Trump voters. During a Tuesday afternoon call hosted by the Democratic National Committee and joined by multiple Democratic lawmakers, Pennsylvania Lieutenant uh, Governor Austin Davis warned that Kennedy is an obstacle to Biden's re-election, reports say. Now, here's the this is the one I wanted to use. And you see how the left you see it on the top. On the top, how the left, only 50% of news outsources are on the left is covering this. But look at the centrists and look at the right. We're aware of this. Look at the angle that Trump is taking. I think this is a smart attack by Donald Trump because it reaffirms support for himself. Highlights how RFK is a radical leftist candidate who he's trying to, who, who he's trying to tell. He's trying to tell progressives, hey, that's your guy. RFK is your guy. So pretty much what Trump is doing is there because end of the day, he let's say you have a Trump deranged lunatic, right? Not a lieutenant, a Trump deranged person. They hear Trump blast someone as the most left, the most radical left candidate in the race. You're gonna go, oh my god! All the progressives should love this guy. They're gonna be like, oh my god, RFK. He he picked a philanthropist. He picked a, a woman, huh? She's a progressive. She believes in green energy. All this, all the stuff that I care about. I'm gonna vote for her because. I'm tired of this idea of the party of lesser evils. I don't believe that. I don't believe in that nonsense. I vote for somebody. I say, hey, I vote for Trump because he's closer to what I want uh, out articulated and represented in government compared to, oh, I'm voting against Biden. Look, Biden, and end of the day, this is why RFK really hurts Biden. Biden has low enthusiasm for him. If you poll people, how enthusiastically are you willing to vote for Trump versus Biden? You'll find more people are more enthusiastic to vote for Trump than for Biden. This is why I think this is a smart attack by Donald Trump. Trump blasts RFK as the most left, radical left candidate in the race. Just, af just hours after independent president candidate Robert F. Kennedy announced his running mate, former president Donald Trump slammed Kennedy, calling him the most radical left candidate in the race. In a Tuesday announcement, Kennedy chose Nicole Shanahan. We already know this, right? She's a leftist, Los Angeles County District Attorney. I don't know how they call it. They frame her as a, um, oh, I don't know why they where they frame her as a a tech entrepreneur, but I'm, I may be wrong. I didn't do much research on her. I just did like surface level research on Nicole. And the uh, VP choice cements his position as a radical left Democrat, according to Trump. But the foreign president believes that the Kennedy Shannon ticket will be good for his campaign and hurts Biden. Yeah, this is why he did it. Right. Using the Trump derangement syndrome as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> that the media has created in of itself it's crazy how a lot of this stuff is backfiring on the mainstream media they create such a, a optics thing on trump that anyone on the left will radically just 
go ballistic over Trump, right? And Trump saying, and, and Trump can kind of leverage that in a good, in a way to his benefit. Okay, you hit anything I say. RFK is the most radically left candidate in the race. You're gonna be like, of course, right? But no one's focusing on Biden. It seemed like Kennedy and, and Trump takes more attention away from Biden. In my view, and I already told you guys, maybe you guys are new to this channel. My dream scenario is is that Biden finishes last. That's my dream scenario. So if you, I don't care if you say, oh, a vote for Ken, a vote for Kennedy is a vote for Trump. No, it's not. A vote for Kennedy is a vote for Kennedy. A vote for Trump is a vote for Trump. A vote for Biden is a vote for Biden. So I don't want to hear no excuse. Oh, I'm tired of both parties, uh, Stephen A. Smith. You got a third option right here in RFK. I don't want to hear none of that. And RFK, to me, has a good shot to finish second or first. Because 70, what, majority of people don't like Trump or Biden. So RFK is competitive. So in a way, Trump is still attacking him like, hey, if you're a centrist, hey, if you're on the right, don't vote for RFK. That's what Trump is saying. But in the opposite is true. It's almost like an endorsement. Oh, Trump hate him? I love him. Trump derangement syndrome, right? This is crazy. I like this. This is a very interesting race. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd really be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I appreciate you watching to the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.